Hey folks, that was a great introduction. Thank you, Kim. Um, you are at these three tricks are breaking the Amazon marketplace on track three. And um, what we'll do is we'll get into those three tricks. I'll start first with an, a brief introduction about myself and maybe just a little bit about my role here at Inventory Lab. Uh, then we'll get right into it. All right, so my official title is a little stodgy called Director of Product. I've been doing this role at Inventory Lab the entire time I'm here. So of course I've seen a lot of evolution and if you've attended any of the other presentations from any of the other team members here, you'll know that a lot certainly has changed in that six and a half years or so that I've been here. Um, I will say this as well, um, at the very end of the presentation, we'll have an open Q&A session for anything in this presentation or anything at all that you have questions about. And I'll add in there, if you have anything related to what does it mean to be a, 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 in the product role here at Inventory Lab, or what might be coming, or what are you thinking about um, as part of your role? I'm certainly happy to answer all those questions. So um, fire away. Um, you can enter those questions in the chat, and we'll get to those later. All right, so overall, I've been in the IT industry for over 25 years. I came from a large corporation to Inventory Lab and spent 15 years there. Um, I really appreciate the flexibility and size of this much better. Uh, it's been much better for me and my family. So I live in a town called Shakopee, which is just south of Minneapolis, southwest of Minneapolis, and um, have been here with my family. I have two kids and I've been married for 25 years. Um, as far as hobbies go, um, I like homebrewing, um, beer, that is for those of you who don't know. Um, I love music, attend a lot of concerts, especially in the summertime. Um, I, to keep fit, I run, do some biking. I love to play golf. I love cars, even though I can't afford them. Um, and then Minnesota, if you're not aware, is the land of 10,000 lakes. Uh, there are more boaters and more boat owners per capita here than there are in any place uh, in the entire United States. And so we certainly like to partake in those lakes here. All right, enough about me. Let's get into the, the tricks. And if you're familiar with BuzzFeed, I've, I've stolen a little bit of the clickbait vibe to, to get this presentation. So hopefully you, uh, you kind of clickbaited your way over here and uh, we'll key on these three things. Um, so I'll preface this by saying the the three tricks aren't really tricks, they're really features in our application. And these are really, I, I purposely picked things that were fairly simple to incorporate into your processes so that you could get the benefit of it right away. And some of you, of course, I'm sure are already doing these, uh, but for those of you who are not, I hope that we, you learn something and are able to quickly incorporate these into your processes. So the first one, the first trick is copy boxes and assign in bulk. Now, um, I know that our customer champions um, certainly will help people with this quite often. Um, we'll have a, a customer that has a very large batch that has many items in it. And it's when you get to the box content process can be very cumbersome to enter in all of that information. So the, how does this help? It's great with those large batches, especially if you have many of the same item that you're packing. Um, you can decide so you know how many boxes you have, you can copy the items into as many boxes as you need all at once. Um, and what's really cool is that it'll automatically calculate the splits of those items for you. Um, so whatever remains, it's going to split out into those boxes, which is very cool and can save a ton of time. So let's just quickly run through how that process um, unfolds. So this is um, the box content page. When you would box your items, you're probably familiar, familiar with this. Um, and you can see on the right side of the screen where your boxes exist. Right now, there's just one box. So if you click on the little tool icon, um, there are a number of options in there, one of which is copy box. So you want to click on that, that action icon and copy box. Um, then it is going to ask you how many boxes you want. And this is the part where the magic happens, where you can tell it how many boxes and depending on how many items you have left unboxed, it's going to split those items out for you, um, which I think is really cool. Um, so just so you're aware, the default value um, will be the number of exact boxes that can be copied, but 
Um, you can change that manually um, if needed, but the value must be greater than zero. If you attempt to change the value, something higher than the maximum number of exact boxes that can be copied, you'll get a warning message. So if you only had, for example, 11 of an item left and you tried to copy 12 boxes, um, it's going to tell you, well, you're, you're not going to be able to put one of those in that copied box, if that makes sense. So we have a little bit of smarts built into this as well. Um, and then it's going to give you a message indicating uh, that that's happening. And again, depending on the size of the batch, I mean, there are people who put hundreds and hundreds of items into a batch. Um, and depending on how many of those there are, it may take just a, a, a minute or so for this process to complete. Exactly. Um, we've certainly talked to people where this has been a massive time saver for them. Um, so if it's something that where you do create large batches, certainly consider this um, in your workflow. It could save a ton of time for you. All right. So that is the end of trick one. So trick two, uh, this again is staying within the box content area and it is a process called scan to pack. What is it and how does it help you? So what this is, um, is a way for you to use a scanner. If you have a barcode scanner like this one, this is a fairly cheap, um, inexpensive and very effective USB scanner um, that I picked up on Amazon at some point in the past. And if you have a scanner like that and you plug it into your PC, you can actually use the scanning um, technology to box your items, which is really cool. Um, how is that helpful? It gets you away from your keyboard. It is the tangible part of what you're doing is it's taking an item and putting it in a box. When you scan it, you put it in that box, you know that the right thing is in the right place, which is really great. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can set it up in your print settings so that you can print labels while you scan, which is really cool, which means you can scan either the FN SKU or the label that you've printed, or you can scan the UPC that's actually on the product. Both will work, which is really cool. Um, and again, um, the getting away from the, the keyboard aspect of this, we've, we've built in sound um, to give you a, a audio cue that your scan has worked um, or if it hasn't for that matter. So let's get into this uh, just a little bit and uh, we'll work through how this process works. So this um, small screenshot is of the top, top toolbar um, in Inventory Lab, and this is omnipresent anywhere you go. Um, that sound toggle button, you'll wanna make sure um, that the sound is turned on if you wanna use sound as part of the scanning process and make sure that your speakers, of course, are working. Um, there's three different things, and I, I didn't get put the recording in here because I wasn't sure if it would work well, but you'll hear a beep, a very positive sounding beep if you have a successful scan. You'll hear a bonk if you have an unsuccessful scan, um, and you can either try again with the scan or add it manually. You can always do, and we'll get into how you can add things manually here too. Um, and then a bling sound means all of the quantities have been successfully assigned. So if you had 10 of widget A and all 10 have been assigned to the box, it'll, it'll indicate to you that all of those are done now um, and you'll move on to the next thing. So pretty cool, um, nice audio feature there um, to give you an indication of how you're doing. All right, so the details are obscure to the shipments IDs here, but you can see that this would be um, on, on the page where you'd start your box content process. And depending on how many boxes you'd have, you'd click on, um, again, the shipment that you want to box. And on the right side, you're gonna see the box information um, area here where you can assign um, items to the box. And so if you, if you click on the information, this little eye icon, um, in the box content area, it's going to expose this, which is a, um, a button where you can click start and you can see the little scanner, the, the neat little scanner symbol. Um, and this indicates that you're gonna enter in scan to pack mode. And so of course have your scanner plugged in and ready to go. And um, again, you can, what's really cool here is you can scan the, the regular manufacturer barcode on that item, the SKU or you can scan the FN SKU, which is the, the printed label that you um, need to put on your item in order to send it in FBA into Amazon. So you click that start button there, and then you'll see that it's listening. It's waiting for you to um, start scanning your items. Um, and when you do scan an item, 
um, you're going to see that a quantity of one has been added to your box. Um, every time you scan, it equals one item. So you could continue if you had four of them, you could scan each one as you're putting it in the box. Um, or conversely, if you wanted to, um, you can click this little pencil icon that you see the arrow pointed to. If you click the pencil icon, it's going to put you into an edit mode where if you would rather just get back to the keyboard and let's say you got a bunch of those and you don't want to scan 50 of them, you can put the number of those items that you have in that particular box um, after the first scan. And then once you're done, click this little check mark and it will have updated that with the total number that you entered to put into the box. Um, and then of course, when you're done, you come back to that particular box on your computer and you click the finish and you are complete. I think this is really nice. Um, for a person like me, I, I struggle a little bit with, all right, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna enter this on Benny in and then go back over here and do that. Uh, to me, this feels more cohesive. This may not work necessarily in your workflow as well uh, as it might for other people. But um, for me, I, I think this is a um, this is a better way for me mentally to manage the box, uh, the boxing process. All right. That is the end of trick number two. All right. So trick number three is maybe not necessarily a part of the list process, but it certainly can be. Um, this is for research. And of course, certainly as you're going through and building your, your batches, research is an important part of that process for, for many people. Um, but this is a way that we can add custom shortcuts. Um, and this is actually really cool. And there's some really good smarts that are built into this as well. Uh, but this gives you the ability to use up to two um, favorite research tools and build shortcuts out of those as long as they have uh, an ASIN as part of the, the URL string or the website address. And what's really neat is Inventory Lab recognizes in that URL string if an ASIN exists and replaces it with kind of an open space so that anytime you, you, you actually click that button, it's going to insert the ASIN for the product that you're researching at that time, which is really cool. We'll get into that here in just a second. Um, if this is usable right now in Scout List and the Scoutify app, and I know we've been teasing this for much of the summit. Stick around at the end so you can see a demo of it. Uh, but this will be coming also this particular option soon to another really cool and exciting and usable tool um, very soon for you. All right, so let's dive into this one. So um, to get into the space where you would set up these custom shortcuts, you're going to get to your settings area. So that again is the upper right in Inventory Lab where you click settings. Um, and this particular set of settings is in the general tab area. So you're gonna click on general and see this. So um, again, I, I, like I mentioned before, you have two options or you have two potential spaces for um, your custom research shortcuts. And so what you're, um, so this is what you're gonna see and, and this is the process that you're gonna take um, in order to get those, um, those custom shortcuts set up. The first thing that you'll do is go to the site where you have um, your research tool. And it can be anything again, as long as there is a ASIN in the URL string. So up here, you can see this is the URL string. Like if you were to go to this Price Pulse site, you can see here um, in, in the search term, it has an ASIN at the very end. And we can, since you guys are all sellers, I'm sure you recognize that in a heartbeat. So you're going to take and copy that um, from the website, um, from the web browser that you are using to, to view that information. And then you're going to come back to this page here where the URL is at the top and the research shortcuts and paste that in, paste this item into that particular spot. And you're going to notice a little bit of magic right away. You can kind of see what happened here with this Keepa URL string, where it's basically taking and um, it put the terms ASIN inside these angle brackets. And it'll do the same for you when, you when you paste it into the URL area. It'll do the same. It'll recognize that ASIN and put it in there. And really all it's saying here is it's just whatever, when you click that link, whatever ASIN you're researching at the time, it's going to spit that in here 
out on your uh, out on the site that you want to uh, perform the research on. All right, so this is what it looks like finished. Um, the the display name um, is is important, but probably less important than the icon text. The icon text is what's going to show on the icon, and you get you only get two spaces because it's a fairly small icon. Two, two, two in front of my face. Two spaces. Um, and then you can make the choice where you want this to be visible, um, whether that be list, scout, or scoutify, or all, or none. I'm not sure why you put it in here if you didn't want it anywhere, but um, you can make the choice about where you think it's important for you to see it. Okay, so this um, may be a little hard to see, but this is where you will see those custom research links. So um, when you're in scout and list, um, this particular view here, um, you can see, uh, again, you have two little spaces. This one is the K, and if you remember going back here, here, uh, that's not it. Here, there was a K, um, was the icon text for Keepa. So coming back here, you can see this is the K that was for Keepa, um, and this was the other one. Can't remember the name. Price Pulse, I believe. Um, so these two shortcuts have been created, and when these are clicked on, it's kind of like if you were to go to, go to Camel, 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 um, or eBay and do research anywhere else, you'll see now that you have these two options. When you click, it's going to take you out um, into a, a new uh, browser window, and it'll populate the associated ASIN for the item that you were researching and show you the information about that item on your preferred research tool of choice. Pretty cool stuff. Um, major time saver too, because then you don't have to have that window open, be pasting it in, doing searches. It's all one click, one step. Okay. All right. So that is trick three. And guess what? I have a special bonus trick. So this one is um, fairly simple as well. Um, and I think what, you know, what the theme running through this is, and what I'd say, you know, about Inventory Lab in general, is that a lot has been done based on your feedback to build processes or build, you know, features and enhancements to speed along the process. That's really what we're here to do is, is to help you as the seller get through these processes faster. If you've been listening to any of the other presentations, Chris Grant had a great one, um, which talked about as your business grows, um, you really need to figure out how do I delegate? How do I actually um, save time? Because your time is gonna become more valuable. Well, this is another way that happens too. As your business grows, as you're fully aware, you just have less time to spend doing some of these smaller, um, more, um, not trivial, but time intensive tasks. And our goal here is to try to make that be as pain-free and as fast as possible for you. All right, so the last trick is called Remember My Last Entry. And this is a fairly simple one, but it can be a massive time saver if it's something that you're not currently doing. So what this is good for is product information that rarely changes. So let's say you always sell new items. So the condition never really changes or you always sell used items and the condition never really changes. This will remember the last setting that you had as you're going through the list process. Um, you can imagine how big a deal that might be um, depending on what it is you're listing. Um, you can still edit that item if you need to and whatever you edit it to, the next time you go back into that um, and add a new product in, in the list process, it's going to remember the last thing that you put in there. Um, and this, and I'll show you the list, it works for most uh, of the fields that you'll see on the list page. And so here's how you can toggle those settings on or off. Again, upper right corner, um, clicking on, I think it's your name now in the settings area. Uh, this will be in the list menu option area. And these are the options that we have available right now. So if you if you put a check mark in this particular item, it means that you want it to remember the last entry. So um, you can see in this particular case condition, which to me is for many for many sellers probably a very slow moving or a non changing item. So it makes a lot of sense for it to remember the condition. Um, tax code, MFN shipping template are, are checked here because you may always use the same MFN ship, shipping template if you are um, merchant fulfilled and don't do a lot of FBA. Um, it may be likely that you use the same one. It could be that you use the same supplier often or you're okay 
changing it when you know it's going to change, but you want to keep that. So of course, any of these um, can be checked and it'll remember your last entry. You can just skip over that uh, as you're making your entry for your next item. Okay. So that was it. Um, so just want to sum up. Um, I mentioned this just a couple of minutes ago, um, but really the goal here, um, and I think where, you know, I just scratched the surface on some of the neat little tricks um, that you can use um, in the time that I had um, to speed along your process. Um, and it really, the goal here is to also reduce errors. So if you have some of these in place, if you're scanning a pack, for example, you, you know what's going in each of those boxes as you're scanning it. Um, and we know that when you do make mistakes, those, those mistakes can be costly, um, especially if they accumulate over time. Um, it, Inventory Lab also helps you make smarter decisions. You know, I think a good example of that is the custom links, set it up, you can move to getting the information that you need from those other tools more quickly. And all of this in some really is intended to save your time, um, which is what I pride myself on doing um, in my role as a product uh, director at Inventory Lab, um, is to make sure that we are providing features that are valuable to you as the seller. And that is what I have. I have, um, be, um, so this, this session is being moderated um, by my friend and colleague Yoshi. And I want to open it up to questions. Um, I don't know, Yoshi, if anyone had come in with anything during the presentation. Hey there, John. And hey there, everybody. This is Yoshi Imamura, one of the customer champions and Kuko or customer uh, coaches, as we like to call it, uh, here at Inventory Lab. So far, I've been uh, monitoring the the chats and the Q&As, we have no questions as of yet, but of course, if anyone does have any questions, feel more than free to add that right on in and we'll be more than happy to address it. And of course, if anything comes up any later, you're more than welcome to reach out to us at support at inventorylab.com. If you have any account specific questions, uh, we would be more than happy to look into that and as well as to get into a little more detail for it for you if necessary. Perfect. Thank you, Yoshi. And I um, want to just mention, I, I talked about my role just a little bit at the very beginning of the presentation. Um, I'm, I own the, the product roadmap for Inventory Lab and the suite of tools that we have. Um, and so we're always working um, with our development staff, uh, with our design staff, um, with our, our business analysis staff on what makes the best sense and our leadership, of course, about what makes best sense given the resources that we have at our disposal to do next for our customers. And we, we, of course, have to balance how do we make sure that we keep all of our systems healthy so that they are functional and operate well with very limited downtime um, for all our, our users, our sellers that are out there um, that are using our tools and depend on it every day um, and, and adding features. Um, what do we think is important to our sellers? Um, and I, and I, I want to put up a, a, just a request out to, to anyone out there. If you have an idea for something that you think would be a good time saver um, or something that you would really like to see added to our tool, our best source of information about that is you. Um, most of what we, we have as ideas come from user requests. So um, certainly um, bring those requests forward to our support staff. Those do make their way on to me. Um, we have discussions about those um, on a periodic basis and talk about how uh, the feedback that we're getting from our seller community uh, will shape our roadmap um, going forward. So, um, so yeah, get those ideas in. And just to add on to that, thank you so much, John. Uh, once again, if you do have any feedback or any way that you can improve the platform, as John had mentioned, please reach out to us as support. Once more, that is support at inventorylab.com. We do uh, actually keep very close track into and very close. I mean, John, I'm pretty sure you and I have had quite a few conversations into you know, some of the feedback that we've gotten, you know, trying to flesh out, hey, you know, what what's possible? What can we do like very quickly and get things in place? Uh, and in regards to anything else, Inventory Lab and learning in that regard, you can always uh, reach out to the customer coaching team. Uh, if you navigate to support.inventorylab.com, you should see an options to click webinars and customer coaching. Uh, this would be an aspect in which you can join one of our live hosted classes. Uh, if you'd ever like to see more of the things that John has gone in, uh, gone over in depth, uh, particularly my uh, course goes over in more detail for the 
box content scanning, copying your box contents, and a few other cool tricks that you can use uh, box contents to kind of speed things along. Yeah, that's great. And if you do have any questions about anything, um, our support staff is the best. Um, there, there are some very advanced features that are in there. Uh, we, we, um, we integrate with a tool called Zapier, which is a, a workflow management tool that you may or may not be familiar with. Um, there's some really cool stuff that you can do there. Um, you can spend a lot of time going down that rabbit hole. Um, and yeah, explore some of the other, um, you know, features that are part of this in our support documentation. Um, or talk to any of our awesome customer champions. They are truly awesome. We are, you know, you, you hear a lot about uh, customer first companies, but uh, we really talk the talk. Um, our, our customer champions are responsive, they're fast, and they're very knowledgeable. Um, they know exactly uh, how to get you from point A to point B. All right, anything through Yoshi? Looks like we're all clear on that front, John. So if anything, we can go ahead and give it a cool wrap up and then we can see everybody off. We'll be having another session shortly. So uh, everyone just remember uh, any of our three tracks, you can just go by a stages and you should be able to see what's up and coming. Great, thank you everyone. Appreciate your attendance and appreciate your attendance at this, uh, our, our inaugural summit event. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining us.